Hey Marco, how are you doing? Okay. Uh, I'm okay. I've been a bit sick this week, but uh, still alive. Thank you. Still and alive. Thank That's you for the point. inviting me here. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you to be my guest. Um, so my pleasure. For who doesn't know you, you are a photographer and uh, <laughs> you have been working for uh, many uh, different uh, websites, magazines, uh, but uh, for who you are working at the moment? Well, at the moment, uh, I've been mostly in collaboration with uh, this, uh, let's say, Finnish-based magazine. Also, uh, although if it, it's uh, uh, edited by this uh, Belgian girl, so <laughs> it's more of a international enterprise, I would say. But it's called uh, Tuanela magazine. I've been working also together with Imperiumi, and uh, I've been collaborating uh, with some to some extent to with some other media also abroad um, but uh, mostly online signs and uh, yeah doing my photography stuff and uh, <laughs> occasionally yeah. writing as well but but yes yeah and when did you start uh, to work as a photographer uh, for in the in the metal music well, uh, I blame my brother <laughs> because um, together with him, we started this uh, design in 2002 called Holy Metal, which still exists, by the way. You can still see where that uh, I occasionally I still do something for us as well. <laughs> um, but um, back in the, in the day, I was starting actually as a writer and uh, I was writing reviews. I was uh, doing the occasional interview, either in person or via email or whatever kind of online audio and whatnot. Um, and then uh, uh, I started to go to concerts when I was a bit older, because back then I was maybe 16 year old. And uh, uh, then I, I didn't have that many chances to go to, for example, to gigs in Milan, because living in my hometown, it was a couple hours drive and so on. But um, yeah, then I started going a bit more to gigs. And um, I, when I started doing concert reviews, I also thought that maybe I could start doing the visual part as well. And uh, it used to be so that we would go actually often with my brother and he would take pictures and I would write. And then uh, when I started going by myself, uh, well, then I, I started picking up a camera as well. and. Uh, I think he has been also very supportive of my of my work with that because uh, he's, he's the one who has been a bit pushing me <laughs> in that way. And then I found out that I really liked it. And um, because I used to like taking photos also in my in my free time when I was a teenager and such, but uh, haven't been really combining the two things with the music together uh, back then. And uh, I found that that combination was really something I enjoyed and it became a passion I couldn't get rid of up to yeah. this day. So. I can relate. Uh, but so you start to doing photography when you were a teenager. Um, yeah, um, but was actually when it comes to the live uh, photography, then uh, it's a little bit later than that. So I think that the first time to answer your question, that I actually did photos for uh, in a concert. It was in 2007. So back then I was 22. Um, and uh, yeah, I went actually to this one uh, uh, like touring festival uh, was uh, maybe a folk fest or something. No, wait. What was it called? This one where they had uh, different folk metal bands uh, touring around Europe with like Monsoro, uh, Enzifero, Meluvelete, these kind of things. Um, I forgot what the name of the festival was. But um, <laughs> yeah, I went to Vienna to see one of those dates and I was taking photos there. Then uh, I actually, uh, back then, borrowed a camera from my dad and uh, then a few months later I got my first uh, professional camera uh, and uh, I started to or not not very professional but my first camera at least 
uh, and I got to do my own uh, with, with my, my own tools uh, in uh, this one festival in Germany, which was the partisan open air. And uh, well, from there, you probably know that I have been doing quite a bit of concerts, photography and such. Yeah. How many uh, re reports do you do during, uh, during the year, more or less? Um, I don't know. There are times in which I maybe have two to three gigs in a week. Then I don't have maybe anything for two weeks. Or so I'd say I might go to, let's say one or two per week. About okay, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And uh, um, now you you live in Helsinki. You have been living for uh, how many years? It's been uh, 15 years, uh, in two months ago, yeah, 25th of August 2008. Okay, and how did it come that you moved to, to Finland? Well, uh, there were a lot of things going on back then. Um, first of all, I was uh, in between deciding what to do with my life. <laughs> And uh, I had just finished my bachelor degree in Italy and uh, I had the opportunity to do the master degree continuing in the same university in Milan or to get a job and start becoming more of an adult <laughs> or trying to, some new adventure and uh, see what happens if I go like studying abroad and whatnot. And uh, well, the thing is uh, uh, I didn't want to uh, I didn't see myself uh, studying uh, further in Milan, going back and forth. I was living in Lecco back then, which is maybe one hour by train. But then you had to, you know, you wake up early in the morning, maybe four or five, and then have to drive to the railway station, get the train, go to the tram, change the, uh, the no, the metro, sorry, change the metro, take the tram, go to the university. So <laughs> back and forth every day it was not for me so then i i thought that i would try my luck uh, with the um, with studying abroad and i took the uh, english exam for a certificate for applying to university in here and uh, and in sweden and the issue about not the issue but the thing with the sweden and finland was that uh, i was at the time having this kind of fascination with the nordic countries i have been traveling to Finland on holiday before uh, in summertime, I fell in love with uh, the quiet and peace and uh, the environment and uh, the passion of also the uh, for the nature that is there, but as well the, with the fact that you can have all these uh, possibilities to see metal bands and uh, a lot of like the culture and the music that there was there back at the time. And um, yeah, well, Long story short, um, I got accepted to uh, study in Helsinki, or actually at the university in Espoo that, that at the time was uh, uh, Tekoko, now it's called Alto. Okay. And um, yeah, so I actually um, at the time also had a job offer uh, in the region in Milan, uh, near Milan. And I remember the, that I had to take the phone call to um, politely turn down <laughs> that job offer because I was saying that uh, I, I'm going to be studying abroad in Finland and I'm going to take many chances with that. So I did my master degree. I started working a little bit here and started building my life here. And well, now we are still around. Uh, do you remember how we met? I don't, because I was thinking that, uh, yeah, we have been knowing each other for a long time. Even uh, yeah, if we um... have met in real life just a few times because, of course, I live in another city. So, mm -hmm. but I I was thinking, how did it I'm happen? I'm not that... sure now if it was at the Finnish Metal Expo. Or... Because I remember Finnish Metal Expo, that. but... Uh, did we... Because we also had some common friends, and uh, I think we met uh, in some, uh, maybe just from random evening in Helsinki before that, maybe. it could be. I cannot remember when when it happened, and uh, I was thinking, I remember the Finnish Metal Expo, but 
it was we we met somehow before it, but I can't. Yeah, I also now. have some memories of hanging out and having beers it on the rocks, for example. But I can't place it chrono uh, chronologically now. So yeah, and then we were at Perkele also drinking beer. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's a thing people so, do, right? <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> but I can't remember when was the first time and uh, ow ow. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> But it's been a while. Let's yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. Um. So you have been uh, taking photos for a long time now, and mm -hmm. uh, which one has been the band, or which one is the band that uh, you love most to take photos of, if there is mm -hmm. one. That is a very, very tricky question. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I've been shooting so many bands and uh, each one have their own peculiarities and interesting things happening. Like I can name bands that have uh, really, um, let's say, peculiar <laughs> uh, stage performances um, or bands which have like really pro energy that you can uh, capture or like i don't know but uh, i think that if i have to think at one at the moment the first that comes to mind is jack stott because um and uh, for the very from the very first time i've seen them perform they really gave me something back that uh it's a uh, that kind of feeling you see this these guys on stage is like wow this is mind-blowing you know what i mean yeah. and um i really um, every time uh, almost mesmerized by the uh, all the things that happen on stage by the how charismatic the singer is and uh, how it, she can uh, keep you glued to the show from start to finish you know yeah and uh, that's something that uh, it, it really really strikes me and uh, I, I'm, I've been a fan of that band ever since I've seen them yeah that's nice and do you prefer to uh, take photos at festivals or a club show or arena show, whatever? Well, it's uh, two very different things to begin with. Uh, and uh, they both have their ups and downs. Uh, festivals, uh, you have a lot of things going on at the same time. They can be much more hectic. I'm running around like uh, I, I feel like you know, a, a ball in a pinball usually. It's, it's a gym ball. session. <laughs> Definitely that is, yeah. Um, but uh, there is also a lot of uh, nicer things that you can do that you don't usually find in a club setting. Like you can focus on the audience. You can focus on uh, on some moments uh, in, inside the festival areas that are not related to the live shows or or this kind of uh, more unique um, things that you find when, when people really uh, can free themselves and be relaxing and enjoying themselves in, the, in this uh, kind of uh, setup that you, you see like uh, only in this kind of events. And uh, I've seen some really nice, uh, I, I like how to see like uh, like the emotion and, and the feeling that, that it gives and the vibe that of people just having fun and watching their favorite bands and like really screaming out their guts and this kind of stuff. Uh, but uh, club gigs can be also really great and uh, more intimate as well, because um, uh, especially with the certain bands, they can create a really unique atmosphere and uh, you can also really find some very unique moments in that and uh, I think that it's uh, there are two very different kind of situations but that you can in both ways find uh, some something really good to to draw from yeah and uh, I, I always actually try to focus on uh, getting the atmosphere and the feel of, of the show from um, from my photography because yeah. uh, I think that's really important so you can always find a way to express that in, in both kind of settings. Let's say that um, if I have to be picking one, I would maybe go to smaller club shows nowadays because uh, festivals are can be quite exhausting. <laughs> 
and uh, they produce uh, a lot of a lot more of work to do afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you know that as well. And uh, I would say that uh, it's a uh, it's a bit easier <laughs> with a club gig. Yeah. Um, when it comes to taking photos, uh, do you uh, keep attention to how many photos you are taking? So are you limiting yourself or are you one of those crazy guy that just uh, uh, keep snapping uh, what kind of photographer you are? <laughs> Well, I think neither probably because I don't consciously look at like, oh my God, I take, I've taken already 80 pictures, so I have to stop, but I don't even go like a machine gun because there is no point in that. And uh, of course, uh, if you want to sometimes uh, get some uh, sequence and there is uh, like that one split second moment that can make the difference, you can use multiple shutter and have like a three or four takes of the same thing and see which one works best. But uh, otherwise, I'm always uh, just to going for what I'm looking at, what I want to take, and I take that one shot. And then if I maybe I'm not completely satisfied with it, I might try to take it again. But uh, I'm not going to uh, spend the time <laughs> looking at how many pictures I've been taking or uh, or, you know, like uh, spending time trying to take desperately photos just without thinking. So it, there is a process behind it. Yeah. And do you do a lot of uh, uh, post-production or do you have just the basic post-production? No, I would say that uh, when it comes to live photos, for me, it, it's it's pointless to spend too much time on, on those. So I, I usually work as a batch. And even though I still go from each 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 photo separately, uh, you will never have a photo which is exactly the, uh, the same editing as the next one for me because I I always do, do some, some small very 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 small tweaks, but uh, I I go one by one and I will always go one by one. <laughs> That's just how I do it, but um, but I I normally try to go more as a in a batch process, and uh, for that so I I don't need to spend uh, an alpha day on one photo to make it look per perfect because then it looks it, it loses the the um, kind of points of it. Yeah, it's, the, it's, the originality. As said, yeah, as I said, you have to capture the atmosphere and the feeling of the show and. Uh, and if you want to make everything looks perfect, then it's not the point. Yeah, yeah. I remember uh, that I put a photo somewhere and I, between the legs of the guitarist, uh, in, on the background, there was someone with, the, with a camera, or, uh, a video maker, probably. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it was not relevant in my opinion. But someone was like, you had to take it off because uh, it uh, ruins the photo. And uh, for my point of view, I did I didn't notice the the guy in the middle of the leg of the guitarist. <laughs> someone <laughs> noticed and then was like, you should take uh, it off. But I don't know. I'm I'm also I don't like to uh, overdo. I just do. I go through the photos and I just the, the minimal part because mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense to overlook yeah, but I would the say photos. That, uh, I, I would say it's also very subjective. I mean, if you if you see like a photo like that, for example, as you said, there is some extra person in, in the back that kind of bothers the view. Um, some people, as you said, complain that, oh, you should remove it because it's not nice to have it there but if, if you if you're fine with it why would you listen to what somebody else yeah it's your picture you know <laughs> yeah true and uh what what kind of uh, uh software program do you use for the for the past production well i've been using adobe stuff for a really long time and uh, mostly i use uh, when I, when i have to do this kind of quick batch editing work uh, especially if you're traveling or something i use lightroom and uh, otherwise if i have to do a bit more serious kind of or uh, photography work then i use photoshop that's my two main tools that's at least yeah. <laughs> 
And what gear do you use? Uh, well, I started with Canon and I stuck with Canon so far. Um, let's see how long that continues. But uh, <laughs> at the moment, I still have my own Canon gear. So mostly working with that. Yeah. And what kind of objectives do you do you have? For the when live show. To concerts, uh, uh, normally I have my 24 70 millimeter lens 2.8, which is uh, to go for many situations. Then uh, 70 200 for close ups. And uh, if I go to some smaller shows, then I have some prime lenses that I add to the mix uh, sometimes with a 50 millimeter and uh, 85, which they can uh, add a little bit more play with the light and uh, and perspective and use different kind of angles and whatnot. So it's always good to have a bit of a variation that you can be more creative and uh, try new things or different things. And uh, it, it's nice to not always stick with the same kind of uh, framing, you know? Yeah, so. yeah. And uh, if you look back to, to the photos that you took at the beginning of your career, uh, how do you feel about your photos back then? Do you feel that, uh, you know, I don't know, for example, when I looked to the photos that I took in the past, sometimes I think, oh, wow, back then I was thinking that this photo is good, but nowadays I think that is not really that good so how do you feel about your past works well i usually feel like wow i've gone a long way from <laughs> back then uh but i don't think that you should feel like uh negative about your earlier work i i think that uh you should take it as a snapshot of where, where you were at the time. So at that moment, you were having that kind of skill and uh, that kind of um, ability to represent things. And uh, since then, you have hopefully improved. <laughs> at least I hope I did. And uh, I think you did too. So, uh, and uh, you shouldn't think it as a, as a negative way of seeing like, oh, I was so bad back then, it's horrible. You should be like, uh, that's uh, what allowed me to get to where I am now. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, because of course, it's always a long process of uh, learning. It's always ongoing, the learning. You never stop. And maybe in 10 years, we will uh, look at the picture that we we are taking now and we will be like, oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm even better. <laughs> well, or maybe in ten years there is no photographers anymore, even because <laughs> AI can do everything. But yeah. you never know. You never know. That's, that's true. But let's hope that it's not going to be like this. <laughs> <laughs> and see. you also took some um, um, promo photos for the bands. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which? How many bands did you? Did you? work for well i haven't done so much uh work with the uh, promotional for bands most mostly because um i usually am quite picky <laughs> with uh, without things uh without who i work with and how i do things so i have my process of doing stuff and um and uh, let's say that uh if it's something that I, I like to do, then I am going to go for it. If it's something that I don't, then uh, I can choose not to do it. And uh, actually, also, there is the situation in which uh, uh, I am uh, having such a busy schedule <laughs> and the band has a busy schedule as well. And then you can never get to agree with stuff. And then it happens that, OK, then you have to find somebody else to do stuff. But uh, um yeah i haven't done so much of it as i maybe sometimes wanted to when uh, nowadays i think i'm quite okay with that though because uh, as i said priorities and everything so it depends if there is something that is really challenging or or that is uh, stimulating me then of course i would go for that but um yeah uh, i haven't i have done maybe let's say a few bands per year yeah. mm, so 
and yeah. it used to be more back in a few years ago before covid uh somehow after the covid a lot of people were asking always for live pictures so <laughs> well they missed that <laughs> yeah 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 and uh, i had something running in my head that now it just ran out what was i was asking you oh yeah uh since you have been a uh, doing this uh, also in Italy, like um, live mm -hmm. music photography. Uh, how different is uh, the the situation in the photo pit uh, or in the in general in the live music photography uh, in Italy compared to Finland or other countries in Europe? Mm. Well, I guess that it's uh, it always can boil down to what kind of what, what is the culture uh, of the place you are in. Like uh, in Italy, you can imagine people are more uh, chaotic, maybe <laughs> um, friendly or it depends, of course, when the situation. But there is uh, always quite a lot of people taking photos in all sorts of events and uh, um, it, it can be quite, uh, quite messy. And uh, in, uh, for example, in Finland, uh, at least uh, I remember back in the days when, especially when I started, there was a really positive community of people taking photos in the pit. Where, like everybody knew each other, and we were all respectful and friendly with each other. And uh, it was actually a really good moment to every time spend, be in the photo pit with these people and uh, exchange uh, advices and tips and uh, just normal chit chat and uh, having fun doing what you like you know and um, I think maybe nowadays uh, people are more uh, like private and uh, not as uh, as friendly uh, as they used to be perhaps it's probably maybe also new generations because now uh, let's face it i'm getting old <laughs> but uh, it's a little bit different uh, in that sense that uh, people are a little bit more on their own especially uh, newer ones maybe at least that's what i i've been feeling in in general let's say because of course there is exceptions and uh, yeah, yeah and then uh, uh, let's say that if you go to some uh, festivals abroad as well depends again and where you are like in in the netherlands for example i've met some really ni nice photographers and uh, the same in germany so it's a uh, it's a matter also of how you relate to other people. And uh, if, you, if you want to get to know someone, then you will. If you don't, then <laughs> you yeah. will just, you know, but uh, it, it depends. Of course, I don't know how is the situation in the photo pit in the uh, Helsinki area, because I have been mostly here in, Por in the Pori area. And uh, the, the only bigger festival that I have been outside Pori has been the not fest in Turku and mm. uh, well I was chatting with uh, some of uh, I met new people and I get new friend <laughs> there in the photo pit so that was it's always nice also to come like not compare but to discuss uh, with other photographers it's a way yeah. to I feel like that I can uh, grow um having a chat with uh, other photographers and see what they are doing and uh, everything. Yeah, for sure. It's like, uh, for instance, uh, I remember this time last uh, spring in Roadburn. Um, I was uh, in a bit of a very bad space mentally because of some things in my personal life that uh, went down just a few days before. And um, I was throwing myself really deep into f covering all the festival by shooting this and that band, going back and forth from one stage to the other and whatnot. And um, then I was uh, briefly talking with this guy um, that uh, is a photographer for the festival. He also had uh, his own exhibition there. And... Um, uh, he, he was reminding me of something very important that uh, uh, you need to take your time to look around and look for the specific shot that you want to take 
otherwise if you just keep rushing through things then uh, you will not be able to get what you want out of it right so then i i slowed down a little bit <laughs> Uh, and uh, I actually uh, saw that uh, I could really uh, rebalance myself a little in a, in the sense that uh, okay now I can I'm doing this and I am doing it right and not just doing it for pretending that I'm not thinking about some other things you know yeah yeah <laughs> so that that was uh, good to have somebody else and just. Uh, helping you to get back into the correct mindset because uh, otherwise it was getting a little bit too hectic. Yeah, yeah. So something good in the photo pit happened and that's that's really important. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about metal music uh, in general. Uh, how did you get in, uh, into metal music? When did you start to listen to it? Well, again, I have to blame my brother here <laughs> because uh, uh, as a kid, we shared the same bedroom uh, uh, in, uh, in our house and uh, he was uh, getting uh, in that age where he would start to be a teenager and listening to stuff like uh, Iron Maiden and Metallica and Manowar, which in that those years were like uh, late 80s, early 90s were... Uh, big really big thing especially and um uh well i got to first listen to those uh, through him and then uh, um, i had uh, actually a little bit of um, a very short like maybe less than a year kind of uh, punk phase <laughs> um, and uh, when i was uh, in my also 13 14 year old uh, i would say i started to listen more on my own also in uh, to, to metal music and uh, first it was um, also uh, same iron maiden and uh, metallica and such and uh, um, well uh, also at the time it was starting with the with the power metal uh, phase in italy with rhapsody and all those bands so and the German side with Halloween and Blind Guardian and things like I was really big into Gravedigger back then. Uh, it was actually the first concert I went to see in Milan. Okay. <laughs> and and uh, when it was it? That was in uh, two thousand and one, maybe or two. Um, but uh, yeah, and then uh, with my brother we went to uh, to God Gods of Metal. And uh, that's when I first saw Slayer. And uh, yeah, I've been hooked. <laughs> yeah. So at the beginning, as I said, I was listening a lot to traditional heavy metal, to uh, power metal, to trash metal. Then uh, I started to look for things a little bit more extreme. And, uh, and I discovered first of uh, like death metal in the in the melodic sense, like Children of Bodom and or, or these kind of things. And uh, then again, I went to black metal and uh, Norwegian and Finnish black metal, and then some, you know, all of those. And uh, after a few years, I started to li listen to stuff which I didn't even consider before, like uh, Doom and uh, uh, Psychedelic Rock or 70s Rock and uh, or this kind of more old school stuff. And uh, after that, I think I, I started searching for either more extreme or stranger things because nowadays uh, I as I if I think for example I mentioned earlier when I was in Roadburn in, in April uh, this year and uh, when I went there I knew perhaps maybe less than 10 of the bands that they were playing this year and I came back with a baggage of bands which I actually really enjoyed a lot and they were really strange and uh, not not very not, not something that you can really put into one specific genre but uh, I, I like that this kind of creativity that comes and uh, yeah. 
and I think that I'm in that phase in which I really need to expand a little bit my well not a little bit even I like really really stretch and challenge <laughs> my music taste because they're always looking for something new and interesting nowadays yeah yeah it's really really nice when you go to a festival and there are bands that you don't know nothing about and then you you find something that is really good and uh, and you start to listen yeah. to them it's a, it's all, it's always nice when from the live music you get introduced to to something new yeah exactly and sometimes i actually do the conscious decision not to even listen to some bands um, before i i know that i'm going to see them live just because uh, i want to see first what they can give me uh, in their show and then if I like the show, I would start listening to them they may be at home. But uh, sometimes, I, well, or actually quite often, I end up doing that because uh, for me, it's really important also the, the live aspect of yeah. the band. Yeah, really. I think so, that the, for, for a band, uh, the live aspect should be the most important because uh, music, yeah, we listen listen to music all the time uh, since we, we are born. But uh, the live music, when someone play, why do you do that? You do be because you want to to show your heart to someone and staying on the stage and uh, give everything you have. Uh, that that should be, in my opinion, what 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 music is about uh, for an artist. Well, I, I mean, again, it's uh, probably subjective because uh, a lot of uh, artists don't really, I, I've even, for example, never even performed live because they don't like to do it. They just like to express themselves through their music, but they don't see the point in, uh, in playing that music to other people in, in a way. But of course, the vast majority of bands, uh, the whole thing is also because then they can play and, um, and uh, you know, it, there is a, some richness in in the, in going to a show and listening to this music you love and uh, seeing people really excited and and yeah. also the band enjoying themselves on stage most likely you know so there is a it, it's kind of its own magic yeah and uh, what's your favorite band if you have one uh, this is a question I hate <laughs> because, because there uh, is not just one band. <laughs> well, uh, it's it's really it would be really easy to sell to tell you a bunch of names, but uh, the it depends so much on the time and the mood and uh, what I feel like at the moment. That someday I might spend. Uh, like two hours listening to Impaled Nazarene and then uh, the week later I can maybe listen to Blind Guardian for three days in a row for so instance. really different so yeah I, it's uh, it also uh, how the weather is outside can affect that so <laughs> there is a uh, I've been spending a lot of time, for example, in winter on Sundays listening to classical music, which has nothing to do with metal yeah. and uh, well, it has something to do with metal, people would say, but <laughs> but uh, it's different, really different kind of stuff. So yeah, and sometimes I've been listening to some progressive jazz stuff, but that, that's very rare. But uh, sometimes I do that too. <laughs> so there is there any kind of music that you don't really like? That when when you hear somewhere from the TV or the radio, you're like, oh no. <laughs> Uh, well, yes, um, I, for some reason, which still eludes me, but I cannot stand, uh, for example, um, rap, hip hop, and those kind of, and uh, the same also with maybe techno music, because I find that really annoying to the brain. <laughs> yeah, I... I think that, uh, yeah, I also, when it comes to rap and hip hop, um, there is just few like songs that I, I kind of uh, like. I will not choose to put those songs by myself, but that, yeah, they, they are fine. But then most of the 
rap thing is is not something that I can I don't I don't understand I don't I don't feel mine and it's not uh, my kind of music at all I cannot so uh, it doesn't give me the same uh, sensation and feeling that I get from listening to yeah. other different genres and the techno is also something uh, that uh, I don't understand I mean uh, I I uh, if we talk about uh, uh, electronical music, there is uh, a lot of things going on. There are a lot of different genres also in there. Oh, I'm a big fan of electronic music, actually, nowadays. Yeah. Uh, I've been but listening the... to a lot of synthwave, ABM, dark wave, and such. Well, quite yeah. a lot of stuff, but uh, I cannot listen to techno. <laughs> hey, techno is also, I remember, I, I don't know if uh, you were still in Italy when there was uh, that... Uh... <laughs> They they were selling this uh, CD was M two O or what what was the name and there was just techno trucks and uh, I sometimes some my some some of my friends were like playing those uh, CDs and I didn't like <laughs> I, I have to say it doesn't ring a bell <laughs> maybe yeah. I dodged the bullet there I don't know maybe it's awesome <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I I I can relate uh, to to what you don't you don't uh, feel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, um, what is uh, your favorite uh, album in metal album? There is an album that, in your opinion, is uh, the the album. You know. Hmm. Um. Let's see. That's also a very difficult question mm -hmm. <laughs> again. It's um, yeah, I, it might be again something to do with uh, what kind of mm, subgenre or something you're listening to. Because uh, I was, for example, talking um, um, just last week uh, with a couple of friends. And we were in a bar and we were talking about death metal and uh, we were talking about Finnish death metal specifically and uh, someone was asking what is the in your opinion the best death metal Finnish death metal record ever done and uh, to me it was uh, uh, on for example uh, Demigod Slumber of Sullen Eyes was probably the best one that I have been uh, coming across um but uh if you talk about uh, in general uh it's uh again I, I i think i feel i have to break it down in different kind of uh sub -generous. like if we think about trash metal i would say uh to me uh, slayer raining blood has always been speaking so i feel like uh if you talk about uh Heavy metal, uh, Iron Maiden, for example, uh, uh, the number of the beast, and you know, if you talk about, uh, you know, it, it's uh, it depends really of which kind. Yeah, it's, yeah. There is uh, again, uh, we could talk about uh, all different sorts of <laughs> music, and and then it's start uh, to to be a really really long list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but let's go to the random topics. Uh, I take my infamous chart and let's see what we are getting today. Let's mm -hmm. hope something something interesting. Let's see. Let's see what's going to happen. I think this this one feel good. Okay, we got sport. Sport. So, ah, okay. Are you a sport person? um well practicing or following <laughs> in general <laughs> both both say, let's say i did sports uh, more as uh, when i was a bit younger I, I as a teenager i used to play uh, in my local basketball team for a couple of seasons um my i, I had uh, quite a bit issues with asthma when i was a kid so my doctors were saying like oh if you do something like basketball for example it would be really good it helped so thanks for that <laughs> um then um i used to uh, 
I, I tried, for example, to be going regularly to gym, but uh, usually after two or three years, uh, you, the motivation starts to wane a bit. And uh, uh, then you, uh, you don't really, you start skipping one or two times and then you don't end up not going anymore. So, but one thing that I've been doing uh, quite uh, off a long time, it's been for, I think now 10 years um, that uh, most of the times if I'm moving around rather than using public transport, unless the weather is absolutely terrible, I usually try to uh, to use my bicycle because yeah. uh, I, I find that it, it's uh, it's much nicer to get some movement done. <laughs> it's a bit healthier. It's also more environmentally friendly, I guess, and uh, helps also maybe save that little bit money for those public transport tickets and such. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, it gives it leaves you with a bit better feeling. And I maybe had interrupted that a little bit after I had an accident that I, I had broken my shoulder uh, in 2020. Uh, but I, I still quite often do cycling. So there is that. And um, otherwise, uh, is, uh, when it comes to follow sports, I would say that uh, when I had this time during the COVID, in which I had started watching Italian football for quite uh, quite often, al uh, almost every week. Uh, also because I had a free subscription that I could watch the uh, Serie A games uh, with uh, with this Roto TV that we had in have here in Finland. Um, then, uh, well, they Roto doesn't have Serie A anymore nowadays, so I can't watch it there in, even if I wanted to. But uh, it, the interest got lost very quickly once they we, we were able again to go back to events and uh, normal life. Yeah. <laughs> <It could. laughs> Let's say I had better things to do. So. <laughs> yeah. What is your favorite sport, if there is one? Well, uh, I'm going to be the stereotypical Italian guy and say maybe football, but uh, I have to say that uh, I am a little bit disgusted as how things have been going in the last few years, especially because I think it's absolutely mind-blowing insane that people have to uh, be paid like uh, the same country as a small nation and as a name, as a name, same salary, sorry, as a small nation to play a sport in when you get at least uh, uh, Arabian league that is buying all the new players and such it's uh, it's really taking all the romanticism and fun out of the sport it used to be all about passion and now it's all about money so yeah. not really following that much anymore yeah. actually nowadays i found that um, I've been a bit more loosely still because I'm not like reading all the news all the time about sport and such either. But uh, I noticed that we have some good uh, tennis players in Italy now. Yeah, so, yeah, true. So that uh, that is going uh, quite nicely. Actually, Italy has a lot of great uh, athletes are in all the sport, pretty much. Uh, mm, yeah, but but they, they, they are not... Uh followed from the media so uh, even if they win and they get a result they are not that uh, much uh, under under the spotlight let's say mm -hmm. uh, because Italy has always been just uh, football 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 I remember that uh, I was always uh, buying uh, uh, when I was a teenager this uh, city sport magazine uh, uh, that mm -hmm. was one per week and I was there was like uh, 20 pages about uh, football and then uh, there were two pages about uh, all the other sports so that was something that always pissed me off <laughs> but it's a similar thing nowadays that mostly it's just football but as I, as I was a kid actually um, back then I used to follow so many different sports because uh, I was really big into ski also it was the time when Tomba and Compagnoni were still going, so we have that. Well, now we have uh, Godja still, who is really good, for example. Yeah. But uh, 
Um, then I was following a lot uh, also cycling. Uh, and uh, I was uh, a big fan of basketball, uh, not only the NBA, but also Italian basketball. Yeah. I was a big fan of Virtus Bologna. And um, then uh, also Formula One, when, you, when it used to be fun. <laughs> And uh, yeah, a lot of other things. But uh, then um, I kind of just stopped. And uh, I guess I diverted all of my passion towards music, photography, and, <laughs> and all yeah. of those things. Yeah. Sometimes I think about those people that are into, in, in the sport, uh, that, that are in the national team, in, in general for different sports. And I'm thinking about mostly of uh, Italian uh, athletes. And I'm thinking, is any one of them listening to metal music because i have this uh, feeling that they are listening to basic general music basic, basic the, the thing that the, in italy go and I, I i sometimes i think there is any metalhead athlete out there <laughs> well i would say it's not the, usually the first thing that people ask in when they interview them so there might be more than you know it's just that yeah. uh, it's not something very public. Yeah. Maybe if someone knows athletes in general in the world that uh, that listen to metal, write in the comments. So we are going to discover something new. <laughs> but yeah. let's get to another topic. Let's see. And this one was right. the first time that came so far. Good. <laughs> so it was something, something different. So let's see what I... I feel this one. This one seems to be good. Cars. Uh huh. So, okay. do you own a car? No, I do not. <laughs> do you have a, a drive license? Yeah, I have a driving license, but um, living in Helsinki area, I really don't feel the need to have my own car because uh, actually I live not maybe in the very center, but quite central area of Helsinki still so I, I can go very easily with public transportation or cycling as I as I said before pretty much I everywhere. actually invite the, the public transportation in Helsinki area even in Tampere, Tampere and Turku area because in Pori area the public transportation is a mess I mean uh, uh I don't live in Pori. I live uh, eight kilometers from the center of Pori, but it's mm -hmm. not, not in, it's Hull Villa. And uh, the last bus in the evening that leave from the center to Hull Villa leave uh, at six or five. Mm -hmm. The last bus. And that's crazy because if someone uh, wants to stay longer, there is not any bus and you then you have to take the the taxi or have your own car or yeah. with the bike yeah, I but would imagine the winter... that the body nightlife it might not be extremely exciting so then <laughs> there is also that but yeah. uh they when it comes killed to... that <laughs> Yes, that's definitely because of the buses <laughs> that they cannot run at night. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, in Helsinki, it's um, I, I would say that you have all, all nowadays uh, they also made the bit longer metro towards the Espo side that goes up to Kivenlahti. So also people living in that area have it ni much nicer. And uh, was it last week that they recently opened a new uh, tram line? which cuts through from Itakesku, so the, so the eastern part of Helsinki, to, um, was it uh, Otaniemi, or maybe even further in Espo. So there is uh, many new improvements also in the public transportation there and uh, or here. So I, I feel that a lot of people in, in here in Helsinki uh, don't need, really need to have a car. And yeah. Yeah, you can move so easily. So yeah, it's not like not that if you don't have your own car, then you're basically fucked <laughs> because you can't go anywhere. Yeah, but uh, talking about cars, uh, do you do you like cars? I mean, uh, do you have uh, like a favorite car, a favorite model of car? 
Well, I'm not really um, very interested in general in cars, especially because I, I not uh, don't not having one. <laughs> I don't really need to <laughs> look into that so much. Um, maybe when I was a kid, I had more of a maybe a preference, and uh, I let's say that I would uh, uh, I was. Uh, like in, for example, Volkswagen cars more than, let's say, Fiat, for instance. But uh, I don't have any specific model or brands or anything that I like or follow or such. Nowadays, I couldn't care less, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Uh, of I course, if I, if I would uh, then um, need to buy a car, then I would have to start digging more into things and uh, start looking into specifics. I'm really detailed in, in uh, when I need to buy something, in uh, reading how, how reviews are, how it goes, and which one is the best and whatnot. So I would make a whole culture <laughs> about it. But uh, up to now, I don't think uh, I, I feel the need for that. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. And I was thinking uh, that uh, when I was a teenager, for some some reason, nowadays I don't care about cars. Um, I don't have a driving license. Um, so I move with the bus and uh, with the bike. Also, being, mm -hmm. be, being active with the bike, it's really, really nice. But now the bike is... On the side because it starts to be too co too cold uh, and uh, slippery. You can just try uh, attach the bike to the bus on the back and just piggyback on there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, back then I was like uh, buying uh, this uh, magazine uh, Quattro Ruote and watching mm -hmm. all the car and all the articles. I don't know what what was back then. I was sure that uh, when I was 18, I was uh, getting my driving license and then buying uh, um, probably uh, an Alfa Romeo or maybe uh, I was, uh, I don't know, I was fixed a bit with the Volkswagen New Beetle Cabriolet. <laughs> mm -hmm, and, okay. Uh, but, but I was similarly reading also those uh, magazines about uh, maybe not so much about cars, but about uh, motorbikes. Uh, okay. I was also following quite a lot uh, the what's it what's it called nowadays this MotoGP or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that was the time when Rossi was a really young guy, and uh, yeah, the Biaggi and Capirossi and all those other guys uh, uh, yeah. that were competing back in the middle of the nineties. I, I don't was... even know nowadays who is competing. <laughs> um. I know that there is probably a couple of Italian pilots who are still pretty good, but uh, I haven't really been following that much myself. Um, but yeah, basically when I was 12, 13 or so, I was uh, also reading about this uh, and uh, motorbikes and scooters and such and uh, thinking about maybe when I get 18, uh, we'll buy one and whatnot. But uh, it didn't happen so <laughs> yeah yeah that's a, that's a weird thing when you are a teenager you are you have all those uh, thoughts about uh, what you are going to do what you are going to buy but then yeah but you don't know what you want when you're kids so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you face life and uh, you realize that hey maybe i have to do other priorities now and i have to think about other stuff so yeah then things change people change and everything true but uh, let's go to talk about something really important. That is pizza. pizza. Yeah, <laughs> you you knew the the most important thing in the world. Well, uh, I, I had a hunch. Let's say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you like pizza? No, it's horrible. <laughs> of course, I love it. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite pizza? Um, nowadays, I've been eating quite a lot of uh, prosciutto fungi, I would say. Um, but in general, I think that a good pizza is pizza which has uh, not too many ingredients, but it's the important is that the base is done properly, that the ingredients are good quality. And, um, you know, so it doesn't have to, it doesn't require much. It has to be simple, but, but good. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. That's true. And um, where is the best uh, pizza place in Helsinki, for example? 
In Helsinki, I would say for me, the, definitely the best is Forza, which okay. is this uh, pizzeria from, uh, is it called Luca Platania, the guy who made it, I think. Uh, but uh, it, it has been open for maybe three years and uh, already the beginning won some awards as best pizzeria in Finland and everything. But uh, last year they were um, in the they made it in the first time for the, in the top 50 uh, in Europe. And this year they were seventh in the same chart uh, mm -hmm. and they were in the top 50 in the world. So Finland mm -hmm. discovered pizza. <laughs> you can say that yeah. and um, uh, I would say that it goes really it's a really really good place but uh, on, on top of that there is quite few others mm, around especially Helsinki area which are really really valid pizzerias yeah. nowadays and uh, I think that over the last uh, six seven years uh, people in here finally discovered what real pizza is <laughs> because yeah, yeah, that's before true. you had only those uh, normal pizza kebab uh, restaurants or uh, koti pizza places and such that uh, even koti pizza improved in the last uh, five years i would say yeah actually i saw recently that they made uh, also new pizza with um, these uh, sausages that come from this guy uh, who used to have a shop in downtown helsinki uh, specialized in different kinds of sausages raw sausages and uh, that's a really they, they are really good uh, is uh, probably one of the best also in the, maybe in, maybe even in Finland of when it comes to make making sausages. So he has been collaborating. Also, he, he is also the guy who made the enduia for uh, for tribunali, for example. Okay. So that, that's he has some expertise there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So now he is doing it also for Koti Pizza, and uh, okay. I think that in general. I mentioned also via Tribunali, and uh, there is Capri, there is, uh, uh, for example, for Italy here in Helsinki, in Yolas. But uh, then they also had in Turku this 450 degree uh, restaurant in uh, in the in the Kauppahalli, the market okay. uh, square, uh, market hall. Um, I think Tampere also might have some place that I've heard of, but now I cannot remember the name. Was it uh, uh, someone talk about uh, Luca Pizzeria Luca? It's possibly that one, yeah, it, yeah, it might be, but uh, it's uh, it's been spreading around. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. nowadays the news is that if you come to Finland, you can actually have good pizza. So. True. True. <laughs> And uh, where did I you own... eat the, the worst pizza ever? Um, that's, I have no idea. Um, usually I try to remove <laughs> those memories <laughs> if it's a really, really horrible place. Um, but uh, one thing that comes to mind is a uh, bad experience with pizza that I had uh, actually still in, in Helsinki um that was many 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 years ago um i went to this place that now doesn't exist anymore it uh, it was called virgin oil okay. in the center and it was also a concert venue and i actually arranged some gig there at some point also so really nice place to have gig concerts but uh, when it came to pizza it was my first time ever in helsinki and I was there in uh, on holiday with uh, some friends, uh, all the schoolmates from high school. And uh, I ordered with this pizza with, uh, I don't remember if the menu was mentioning them as anchovies or sardines, but uh, you know, as, a, as, a, as an Italian for anchovies, you mean, you, you, you mean like the small salty ones that uh, yeah. you don't often find here. And uh, instead, it was with those marinated uh, fish that you have in these Nordic countries, like with that really sweet flavor and taste. And um, it felt so disgusting. For... <laughs> <laughs> so I think it was maybe one of the time, few times that I could not really even finish it because it, it was just not very yucky for, for my taste. Yeah, yeah. 
I not was a not experience. expecting that at all. <laughs> yeah. But uh, let's go to the most important question of this interview. Does pineapple belong to pizza? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Some people will hate me for this, I know. But uh, no, I think it's blasphemy. Actually, I used to joke with my ex-partner that uh, in, uh, if you have to find a place uh, that does a proper Italian pizza, look at the menu, and if they have anything that has pineapple in it, then it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. actually, in Italy, it's, uh, you can find sometimes the pizza Hawaiiana, but, uh, yeah, but not, uh, not all pizzeria do it. <laughs> Yeah, and I think it's more because of the tourists, because people are come from abroad somewhat expect to find that. And uh, yeah. they might be disappointed if they don't have it. But um, I, I don't think for me, if you talk about pizza in the traditional sense, it, it's not belonging there. And I mean, I've had some really strange pizzas myself. Like uh, I had pizza with uh, blackberries and brie, for example, which I think it was actually pretty good. But uh, I don't see, I, I still vote no for pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for uh, blueberry, but not for pineapple. Uh, blackberries, what it, was it? But yeah. Blackberries, sorry. Actually, quite recently, I had a pizza with um, uh, chanterelle mushrooms. And uh, what's, in, uh, what's in English? Polka. Um, um, strawberries, maybe. Uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, with those yeah. Little, little red ones that you have also when you when you eat the reindeer meats and yeah. Stuff. yeah, yeah, those ones. And actually, for me, mushroom is so usually one of my favorite toppings on pizza. I think it's uh, it's a really really good. Yeah, it's pizza. it's your thing. Um, <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but, but we are at the end of this interview, so thank you so much for your time. It was really a pleasure to. Yeah. If you um, would you like to say something to people that are watching this interview? Mm, well, uh, uh, I don't know if you guys uh, are into photography or, or wanting to get into photography, just uh, follow your heart and do things like you want to do and don't let people tell you how to do stuff. If you are metal fans, this. <laughs> And uh, if you like pineapple on pizza, well, you can do whatever you want. Just don't put it on mine. <laughs> <laughs> Agree. Thank you. Thank you.